Welcome to Electron Line. There's nothing like a simple example to see how a law or a rule or an equation works. In this case, we want to get an example that shows how Kirchhoff's two rules work. In this case, we have a very simple example which you really don't need Kirchhoff's rules for to solve. We can solve those with our traditional methods, but let's go ahead and use Kirchhoff's rules to see how they work. So what we need to do is realize that we have three separate currents. We have I1, I2, and I3 because we have three branches. If you indicate the branch point there and the branch point there, to go from this point to this point, let's call this branch point A and let's call this branch point B, notice there is three different ways in which you can go from A to B. You can go this way, you can go this way, and you can go this way, which means there are three branches and therefore three currents and we're trying to find what those three currents are. If we have three unknowns, that means we're going to need three equations. We can find that by using the two rules. The first rule, we're going to sum up all the currents entering a branch point and all the currents leaving a branch point. So in this case, if we pick branch point A, we can say that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3, which is our first of our three equations to find the three unknowns. Obviously, one equation is not enough. We need two more, which means we're now going to go around two loops. Here's loop one, there's loop two, in order to sum up all the voltages and get the other two equations. So for the second equation, we're going to use loop one, and we're going to sum up all the voltages. And when we do, let's see what we get. Starting from point B, we go around here, and we go across the battery from the negative end to the positive end, so that's a plus 10 volt rise and then we go across the resistor in the same direction as the current that the voltage drops so minus the current i1 times the resistance so we call it 5 i1 and then we go across this resistor in the same direction as the current i2 so that's another voltage drop minus the resistance times the current i2 and that adds up to zero so here's our second equation and in this case, we have I1 and I2 in that equation. We now need a third equation, so we're going to use loop two. We're going to sum up all the voltages, and let's see what they are. Starting at B, we're going to go across this resistor, but now in opposite direction of the current. When you go in the opposite direction, you have a voltage rise, so that will be plus eight times I2. We go around the corner, up here now across this resistor which is now in the opposite direction oh no not opposite same direction as i3 so that's a voltage drop so that will be minus 4 i3 and that adds up to zero because now we come all the way around back to b so there's our third equation we have now three equations one from currents one from Kirchhoff's rule with the currents and the other two equations with the voltages so now we have three equations we have to solve those simultaneously the typical rule is that you use the first equation right here and substitute for one of the two, one of the three variables into the other two equations. Now notice there's no I1 here, but there's one over here. So we're going to substitute I1 for I2 plus I3. So on equation one, we're going to rewrite that equation. So we have 10 minus five times, but instead of writing I1, we're going to write what I1 is equal to in terms of I2 and I3. So it would be I2 plus I3, and then we still have minus 8I2, and that is equal to 0. So now when we simplify this, we combine all the I2s together, so we have minus 5 minus 8, that would be minus 13I2 minus 5I3 is equal to, when we bring the 10 across, a minus 10. Or, simplified, we get 13I2 plus 5i3 is equal to 10. So there's our first equation that only has i2 and i3 in it. Starting with equation number 2, starting with this one right here, notice we already have it set in terms of i2 and i3. So here we can say that 8i2 is equal to 4i3 or i3 is equal to 2 I2. So here we have a direct relationship between I2 and I3. Now all I have to do is plug this back into my equation over here. And let's see here. So I can replace I3 by I2 right here. So by using this equation here 
and substituting I3 for 2I2, I get 13I2 plus 5. Instead of I3, I'm going to write 2I2, and that is equal to 10. So here we have 13 plus 10, or 23I2 is equal to 10, or I2 is equal to 10 divided by 23. So here I have my first current in terms of amps. So this, of course, would be in terms of amps. Now I go back to I3, which is twice I2. So if I2 is equal to 10 23rds amp, then twice that much, I can then say that I3 is equal to 2 times 10, or 20 over 23 amps. So now I have I2 and I3. Now I go back to my first equation, which has I1 in terms of I2 and I3. So now I can write that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3, which in this case is 10 over 23 amps plus 20 over 23 amps, which means that together it is 30 over 23 amps. In other words, I1 is equal to 30 over 23 amps. And so now I've successfully determined the current in each of the three branches. I1 is 30 over 23 amps, I2 is 10 over 23 amps, and I3 is 20 over 23 amps. And it's always a good check to make sure that when you go back here, that the current I1 is equal to the sum of the two currents I2 and I3, and I think we have achieved that. So here's a good example of how you use Kirchhoff's rules. You set up three equations. The first equation, you pick a branch point, you sum up all the currents entering, and set it equal to all the currents leaving. For the other two equations, you pick two loops, you go all the way around the loop, you add up all the voltage rises and all the voltage drops, and they should add up to zero, so you set them equal to zero, and you solve the three equations simultaneously, and that's how you use Kirchhoff's rules to solve circuit problems like that. In this case, we used a simple example, we'll show you some more complicated examples later, and that's how it's done.